Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of For the Now Space News. For the Now Space location, culminating August 27th, 2022. This is your spot for weekly headlines, meme of the week, and of course, cognitive conjecture. So to start off with, I had a request from a student of mine who suggested that instead of having the syntax already banked on the headlines as I go through them, why don't I go through and syntax and go? Now, these Now Space News programs are 15 to 20 minutes, maybe, in length. If I were to go through and do that and explain everything in syntax in the headlines, you know, five or six headlines, the show would be like 90 minutes or so. So from a practical standpoint, as a creator, I just don't have to have that kind of now space to devote to something like that when there are already over 400 videos on this YouTube channel and at least half of them having to do with syntax. So if you want to study syntax, you're more than welcome to have at it on my my channel. If you want to practice syntax, you can go ahead and look at any news source any headline or anything at all on the internet uh, and syntax it. And if you want to check your work to know if your syntax is correct or not, well, of course, first you have to do know the grammar rules of syntaxing with regards to correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. You apply those after you determine the tangibility or non-tangibility of a word. And again, that's explained in great depth elsewhere. This is just sort of a light and fun educational Uh, knowledge cultivation video series. But to honor the request of the student, I'm going to syntax this headline in quote-unquote real time and give a little bit of explanation as to why I'm banking the values I'm banking. You have to excuse me, I have a little bit of a head cold here, a little bit congested. All right, so to begin with, uh, you normally start from the the back uh, when I teach beginners because that is the most accurate and efficient way to syntax that I've found. Um, You are able to take everything into consideration as you go, and you rarely, if ever, make any mistakes. The first question one would ask when one is syntaxing, starting from the word borrowers, is that word tangible contract or non-tangible contract? Well, the way to determine that would be to look it up in an etymology dictionary and look up the earliest nativity root meaning of the word in the etymology dictionary and or the parts of the word, the syllables, that's parse, and find out if those are tangible contract, if you have a tangible contract with those. And to briefly explain what I mean by tangible contract is if I lend you my lawnmower, you are borrowing the lawnmower. You are a borrower. We have a tangible contract with that word. We know what it means. So borrowers is tangible contract. How about most? Now, most is a little different because it's kind of one of those ones that are on the line where you really would have to look it up and then make a determination using rule one rule equal judge mechanics as to whether it's tangible or non-tangible. F-O-R, same thing. You'd have to look it up and determine whether or not you have a tangible contract with it. Debt, student, all those things. Same deal. So I'm going to show you the syntax values that I would bank going backwards. So for me, following the rules of syntax, borrowers is a tangible contract pronoun. Most tangible contract adjective for is a non-tangible contract adverb. Now, when you syntax backwards in reverse, and this is an awesome little uh, mechanic you can put in your back pocket, once you've certified that you, you've hit this adverb, you can take this entire part away. You're done with it now. Done, done, done. So now you just syntax from here backwards. So debt 
I have a tangible contract with what debt is. That is a tangible contract pronoun. Student, same thing. It's a tangible contract adjective in non-tangible contract adverb. Now, if you notice, for and in are adverbs, and I said they're non-tangible contract. Another little mechanic you can put in your back pocket. Nine times out of ten, if you see a word that's considered a preposition in the fiction, it's probably going to be non-tangible contract. So then we have a number here, 10,000. Definitely have a tangible contract with that. That's a pronoun. Forgive. Adjective. Biden is a name. Adjective. Now, again, the same thing goes when you hit that adverb. You can take that away. Because nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break and it continues with the evidence, which is what I've done by taking that away, or an adverb, which is what we have here. So now we move on to the top part, a different kind of canceled. Now I'll go from the beginning on this one just to show you an example of how that would look. So we have non-tangible contract A, tangible contract different, tangible contract kind, non-tangible contract of, and Past tense tangible contract canceled. So that's a pretty easy one. That's an adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb, past tense. And because it's at the end and it's also different size font and so on and so forth, that could also be considered a dangling participle verb. Because, ladies and gentlemen, what is a, a verb? A verb is thinking. And there's nothing left to think about here. Just a breaking to continue to the evidence. And, of course, the weak is adverb verb. Also, dangling participle verb. So there you go, Peter. There's your syntax lesson. Hope you enjoyed it, my friend. So while we're here, let's talk about this fiction headline a different kind of cancel biden forgives ten thousand dollars in student debt for most borrowers now ladies and gentlemen i'll be the first to tell you that the student loan business is a racket just like any type of loan with interest and penalties and fees and all this kind of stuff um you know i myself back when i was a very young individual uh, i think i took out it was $6,000 Stafford loans for two semesters of college at one point, which added up to a total of $12,000. And what ended up being paid back in the end was about $25,000 uh, that they, they ended up taking from me before I ever learned about correct sentence structure or anything like that. So it is a racket. And, but on the other hand, you know, this kind of thing where he's, sort of letting these individuals off the hook, so to speak, with this debt really uh, sticks in the craw of those who have had to pay this stuff back and or are paying it back right now. Uh, and it just goes, you know, I think is going to not have a positive effect on the generation <sighs> that's walking around right now in college. I mean, they have enough... Uh, problems as it is as far as sensitivity and attitudes and, and things like that it's just uh this is just going to add to to that mix so to speak next headline can the cdc be fixed we have pronoun adverb adjective adjective pronoun in the past tense the sharpest opinions on the debate from around the web the cdc i guess they're talking about how the uh, issue was handled um, and uh, so I guess they're saying and admitting that it is broken it is broken so I mean send it to the shop see what we can do with it right next headline US closed Novak I'm not going to try and say that name to miss the US Open because he's not So, this individual has exercised his 
freedom of choice because everything is contract and it's by consent. And uh, he's not consenting to to doing this thing that it says on the screen there. So that's his choice. I mean, and that's a pretty funny pun up there, U.S. closed, having to do with, I guess, the U.S. open. So U.S. closed, U dot S dot is uh, taken as a whole entity, tangible contract. We have a tangible contract with what that means. Well, I do. And uh, closed is past tense pronoun. And of course, Novak, and then that word after it, that's adjective pronoun. It's a name. And those are both tangible contracts. And then two is an adverb in the future tense. Miss is a verb. The is an adverb. Again, we have the U.S. tangible contract adjective. Open. U.S. open. Now, open in this sense is tangible contract because it's the name of something. So that's an adjective. Because is also an adjective, tangible contract. And then he's is a pronoun followed by adverb not and then the last word is a past tense dangling participle verb the next headline comes from npr california is poised to phase out sales of new gas powered cars california tangible contract adjective is is tangible contract adjective poised is tangible contract pronoun in the past tense Two is a future tense adverb, modifying phase in the tangible contract verb. Out, non-tangible contract adverb. Sales is tangible contract adjective. Uh, I'm sorry, verb. Of is non-tangible contract adverb. New is non-tangible contract verb. And then gas-powered is tangible contract adjective in the past tense. And then cars is a tangible contract pronoun. Gas hyphen powered is considered as one entity. That's why I've only given it one value. Electric cars are parked at a charging station in Sacramento, California. Okay. So I guess California is really forcing the issue on getting rid of gas powered cars. Now that, you know, it makes sense, I guess, with the way the politics are out there. I'm a big fan of Mopars of muscle cars and things like that. And, uh, this is all, I think, in my own opinion, fueled by big business and what people are making, you know, the, the rich people are making money off of. And it's pretty funny, though, that all the parts and everything and uh, these charging stations and all those things like that are uh, reliant on fossil fuels. So, hey, who am I to point out any contradictions in these, uh, what do you want to call it, these uh, go green type people's uh, logic. Next headline, Kobe Bryant's widow was awarded 16 million in the trial over crash photos. So we have adjective, 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 adjective in the past tense, adjective in the past tense, adjective, adjective, pronoun, and then adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun. Now I guess this has to do with some photos that were perhaps passed out by police and firefighters who were on the scene of the crash of her dead husband and uh, I think child. And so the harm done by those photos being released and passed around comes to the tune of $16 billion. I don't think anyone in her family will be starving anytime soon. I mean, I don't think they were going to be starving anyways, but 16 million can feed a lot of mouths and keep a lot of roofs over a lot of people's heads. No doubt. Next headline. Leaders. Russia, geopolitics, and the world economy. Are sanctions on Russia working? The lessons from a new era of economic warfare. So leaders is a pronoun, Russia pronoun, geopolitics pronoun, and is a conjunction the is adverb world is adjective and economy is pronoun now why is there a 401 there well folks any word standing by itself is a pronoun so nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence 
or an adverb. But guess what? We have a conjunction after geopolitics. So by that rule, either it's a break in the continuance of the evidence or it's an adverb. But and is not an adverb in this sense simply because it functions as a conjunction. It has a term on this side and a term on, a term on this side. So it's a bridge. It's a neutral bridge. It does not affect. It does not modify anything. So taking those uh, closures into consideration, geopolitics is essentially being followed by the adverb the, thus complying with the nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the contingence of the evidence or an adverb because and is a neutral conjunction. So you can think of it that way. It is connecting a standalone pronoun and another syntax scenario. And is not functioning as a break in the continuance of the evidence. It's a bridge in this case between a pronoun and the word the. Think about if you had this scenario. Instead of geopolitics and the world, if you had the, of, and geopolitics. How would you syntax that? The, of, and geopolitics. Well, that's easy. The, of, and geopolitics would be syntaxed as one, two, zero, two. <laughs> Adverb, verb, conjunction, verb, dangling participle verb, if that's how you uh, wrote it. The, of, and geopolitics. So anyways, on to the next one. Are sanctions on Russia working? Adjective pronoun, adverb, adjective pronoun, the lessons from a new era of economic warfare, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, adjective pronoun. Now to look at this uh, from the fiction, you know, from that perspective, I would have to say that uh, how is this even an issue? Russia is its own country. It exists as a sovereign entity. It's not reliant on anything. Unlike the past tense United States, uh, Russia is completely self-sufficient. So why would sanctions have anything to do with Russia? Why would Russia even be worried about it? Uh, I think, in my own opinion, it's just a, a <sighs> bread and circuses. So to wrap it up, we're going to do another little syntax lesson. This one's going to be a little bit faster. AI rapper FN Mika dropped by capital over racial stereotyping. So we're looking at the words starting at the end. Stereotyping, racial, those are both tangible contract. So we have pronoun, we have adjective, over is non-tangible contract, adverb. Capital is tangible contract, verb, by is non-tangible contract, adverb. Then we have dropped, which is a, sorry about that, that's hard to write with this thing, a pronoun in the past tense, Mika is a name, so adjective, 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 adjective. F and Mika has more than 1 billion views on its TikTok account. It's. So this is, a, oh, it's an AI rapper, I guess, which is voiced by a, a human being, from my understanding. So we have account, which is tangible contract, pronoun, TikTok, tangible contract, adjective. I believe it looks like that's one term. So it's is non-tangible contract, adverb, on is non-tangible contract, pronoun, views, Tangible contract, adjective, billion, tangible contract, adjective, one, tangible contract, adjective, than is non-tangible contract, adverb, more, tangible contract, pronoun, has is tangible contract, adjective, and then F and Mika, both adjectives, tangible contract names. So that's pretty, that's pretty interesting, you know, racial stereotyping, I'm always amazed at the amount of people that will still bring color and race into any topic and just totally ruin it. And by racism, I mean the classical meaning of racism where you imply 
that one race has some sort of special favoritism to the exclusion of another race. Moving on to meme of the week. This, this was me as a teenager, definitely had this issue. I can relate to uh, <laughs> Patrick, Mr. Krabs, and SpongeBob here. So now let's move on to the cognitive conjecture portion of the newscast. This comes from Jorge Henriquez. And I see they spelled my name wrong and they spell multiple other words wrong. So that means that plain English is probably not their native tongue. And I can see by the comment that they have no idea how correct sentence structure works. Probably don't have never used it. It seems to be one of those individuals that buys into those hero stories. Buys into that uh, condition of state known as protagonist-centered morality. Where you are so taken with someone, so inspired by them, that you just believe anything they say, never mind the correctness, never mind that they do this, that, you know, a suspect, doesn't matter. You will follow them because you're so inspired by them and you believe their words without evidence. I have only one issue, Matthew, how is it that you can use the flag, which is the one that will give you the authority to enter into contract, but you have not come to join with the one who hold the terms and conditions of that flag. Show me someone, Jorge, who has a correct contract with the flag. Were you there next to Russell to the point to lose your life for the, loose your life for the flag? Because if you did not, did not enter into contract with the bearer of the flag, you have no authority. Does not matter how correct you may be. Oh, so correctness doesn't matter to Jorge, as I stated. Please do not take this the wrong way. But to me, it is clearly that you are not in compliance with what I just mentioned. I may be wrong or I lack more comprehension. Well, you are correct on that. I highly recommend learning the grammar first before flapping the old gums. Or I am missing something, but to me, we may have knowledge, but it is not sufficient without the other factors. Well, Jorge, you know, it's your own choice if you choose to be a protagonist-centered morality type of individual, an authoritarian follower, um, a knee bender, ring kisser. I mean, if those are things that you want to participate with, that's entirely up to you. I myself do not participate with that. For me, correctness is key. Correctness is first and foremost. To you, and this is, I think this is a very good commentary on those individuals who do follow uh, the individual mentioned in that. In that they don't care about correctness. They don't care about being correct. They just care about following the leader and doing what they say. He just said correctness. What did he say? It does not matter how correct you may be. Now, Russell himself has said in videos, you have to be correct. But this guy's saying, no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> All right, Jorge, I've had a little bit of fun with your comment here. This is cognitive conjecture. Um, if you want to contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and have a discussion about this, I will certainly set up a video consultation with you and explain to you the importance of correctness and having closure on this grammar. Because I have done other videos where I have audited and scrutinized Colin Russell hyphen J Colin Gould's grammar in those contracts and things like that. And I've not found one contract of his where he uses correct sentence structure that is correct. There are multiple errors all over the documents. But I mean, that doesn't matter to you because it doesn't matter. Correctness doesn't matter to you, but it matters to me. And I will always stop and correct if someone can show me if I've made a mistake, if I've done something wrong with regards to the grammar. But first, you have to step onto that geometric level playing field. Meet me there. Show me what I did wrong. Show me how to correct it. So far in the past five years, no one has done it. Certainly not you, Jorge. I invite you to study the over 400 videos on my YouTube channel, having you do a correct sentence structure. I also challenge you to name one other individual 
in the entirety of this now space that has a YouTube channel with over 400 videos pertaining to correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar that they themselves created and teach it. So before you step up and start talking about things like that, it's always good to know what it is you're talking about. And you obviously don't because you even admit it. You say you lack comprehension and you're missing something. You certainly are. You're missing closure on the grammar. And uh, I highly recommend you seek that out. Thanks for your comment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that about does it for this week's tumultuous edition of For the Now Space News. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, next week, I'm going to try and condense it a little bit. I don't think I'm going to do the uh, on-the-spot syntax, or maybe I'll just do one headline because this kind of made it run a little over time, which you know I find that, unfortunately, the attention span of the average YouTube viewer is very, very short. So I try and keep my videos short and sweet. And this one is definitely not that. In any case, hope you enjoyed it. As always, if uh, you want to join the membership on this channel, there are two tiers. The first tier are for people who just want to say thank you. And the second tier are for those more serious individuals who want to contribute to the direction of this YouTube channel vessel. I value your input. And also, you can apply for a correct grammar workshop at the email address screened at the bottom of your picture. Thank you and salute.